Hi folks, welcome to Cloud Sprint. Today we are going to learn GCP IAM the enterprise way. By end of this video, I'll be sharing five use cases which will help you to understand GCP IAM end to end, and that is the maximum scenarios which you will be getting while working on GCP in any corporates. What if I tell you this GCP IAM is all about these three basic questions? First is who are you? Second question, what can you do? And third is on which resources? Let me break it for you. And how does IAM helps me? IAM allows all the administrators to authorize and take action on specific resources, giving you full control and visibility to control Google Cloud Manage resources centrally. This IAM is all about managing those resources efficiently, effectively. Who are you question is all about finding out who are you, which is your identity. What can you do is all about your role, your permissions, what are the abilities you have. Resources are mainly about the GCP infrastructure in this case. If you go in more detail, identity majorly as used by any major corporates or enterprise level users are these five categories which are used. We will get into detail of this identity later on. Uh, then second part is what can you do? There are a set of roles which has set of permissions included. Then you have resources. The resources are inside your folder, inside your organization node, or within your GCP projects. If you can answer these three questions, you have already have IAM policy in place. First is Google account or cloud identity. A Google account represents a developer, an administrator, or any other person. Basically, it has to be a human user. It, it, it is not a system who is interacting or going to interact with Google Cloud. Any email address associated that's, that qualifies as a Google Cloud identity. For example, in the last video, we created pushkar at the cloud screen dot in as an org user. And then we also have an example of from Gmail. Second is service account. A service account is an account for an application services or compute workload instead of individual end user. So when a system is talking to a system, that's when you create a service account. For example, Jupyter dash service at the rate the your GCP project name. Service accounts are not created at the org level. It is always created at the project level. However, cloud identity can be created at the org level. Generally, it is created at the org level only. The third type is Google group. A Google group is, is, is a named collection of Google accounts and service accounts. Every group has a unique email address that's associated with the group. Example, GCP organization admins. Now, fourth part is all authenticated users. This is about all authenticated users within your uh, boundary of your organization within GCP. All right. If you need some resource to be make it available for all of your organization users, you can use this filter. The fifth and last majorly used part is all users. This flag helps you to make allow any access any resource to all authenticated and unauth authenticated users, which is basically making it public. All right. Just give it a scan these are only five kind of users you're going to deal with while working with gcp im now you know what is identity what are the chances of identities can be all right let's understand the next part which is roles a role is a collection of permissions you cannot grant a permission to the user directly instead you grant them a role when you grant a role to user or a group you grant them all the permissions that the role contains for example you have role called compute.instanceAdmin and this role consists all these permissions to delete a compute instance, to get it, to list it, to stop, start, to set the machine type and many more. If you allocate this particular role to any group, they will be able to do all these operations on compute of GCP. The roles extensive list can be found at this uh, particular uh, location, which is cloud.google.com slash IAM, right? As, as we mentioned that it is a collection of permissions, okay? It has mainly three types. First is basic roles, which is, uh, these were you know created earlier when the Google plant was launched, but it is being carried since then. Uh, but it's definitely not recommended for you to use in your production projects and you should never ever use it. The, there are a few examples of it like browser. Browser is to allow you to see your uh, folder structure, your org admin and all. Second is your owner 
who can do anything in within your project or in your organization if given at that level then editor can do little less viewer can just view your stuff so that is a basic role while learning you can definitely use it but when you're designing systems for any enterprise you are not going to use them because it's too permissive and it gives a lot of options to the uh, any user which is not recommended for the cloud second is predefined roles roles that give fine grade access control to the basic roles for example if you just want to give pubsub publisher to a particular user you will just assign roles slash pubsub dot publisher so that person can only publish uh, you know messages to that queue and nothing else that's and this these predefined role are already created by user so you don't have to create it uh, that will save your time and that is recommended as well if a role already exists we should use that rather than creating one third is custom role this role can be it has uh, tailored permissions which as per the need of our organization if we want to allow create a role for one set of users like for example devops user can do five things i'll add all those predefined roles in a custom role and i'll assign that custom role to a user that's where custom role helps but generally we don't create it until we have you know a specific need that's about role so we understood about the identity we understood about the roles last bit is the understanding about the resources in last video we have created this structure all right what are resources resources are infrastructure in google cloud project classified under folders in this case we created a domain as an org node we created folders for devops data science and as per environment we created the folders we also created four projects for these four segments we don't have any resources but when you create resources that is something will fall under this category while assigning iam policy as a best practice we make sure that we are not assigning any permission to an individual it must be allowed or allocated to a group only in a nutshell identity plus roles when it is attached to a resource together it is called iam policy all right i'm just going to give you a quick walk through of iam and then we can directly jump to the use cases which will help you to understand for this i need to go to iam iam has a you know menu child menu over here you can create service accounts you can click on service accounts and you can create a service account which we will create in one of the use cases this is more about attaching the policy if you want to know how to see the roles for roles you can come directly here okay this this is set of default roles we already have you can also create a custom role from here you have identity and this is a place where we attach the principal which is your um, you know any of the identity this is a role and when you attach here it becomes a iam policy that's what we all discussed in uh, our ppt now let's jump to the use cases and try and understand how to do it in the real world The first use case is that you have three DevOps engineers and two data scientists have joined your team recently, and you need to provide them access to GCPs. Let's do it. I'll go to GCP admin. Since they are new users, I have to create it. Let's go and create the first user, John Miller. I'll pass the. I basically break the credentials and email address here. So I'm passing the email ID at John dot Miller at cloud sprint dot in. I'll click add new user. His credential is created. So, same way I created five more users, which is needed for this use case. So we had to create three, uh, three uh, you know engineers for DevOps, two for data scientists. That's what I have created five uh, you know new joiners in the company. The second part is to give them access. Now, if I have created John, let's check his access. Can he access? When you go here, you find out that within organization node, he cannot see anything. Okay, if he goes to I am, he's John is not having permission to go anywhere or check anything because so far we have not given him any permission specifically. We have just created his user within our organization, and that says that he has no active projects. That is really expected 
until and unless given explicitly he shouldn't be able to access any user now go ahead and uh, uh, create a group for devops engineers i'm going to give the group name as gcp devops group same will be used as an email address because that's the uniquely ident unique identifier basically while working with IAM. I'm going to give a uh, owner and let's activate the security and click on next. When you click on next, you'll be asked to uh, configure the access type. It has uh, various categories, team, announcement only, restricted or custom. For this example, we are going with restricted because we want to control the way how anybody can be added in this group i'll choose restricted i'm not going to allow outside members and that's my gcp devops group is created i'll go and add members I'll click on add members I right, let's check that how many uh, members we have john kunal and rahul as devops uh, engineers let's add three of them click add to group we have added these three users and pushkar as an admin all right now let's go ahead and create a group for data scientists also which is Pratik and Matt. Let's create a group for them. GCP data science group. Same will be used as uh, email address which is either at cloudsprint.in a description to refer later on. You can have a owner. Security again. We're going to use restricted one. And we, ju we just want that anyone in organization can ask to join this group after approval. Let's add users from here only. I'll click on add members. Let's check the names. Pratik and Matt is from data science team. Add them in the data science group. All right. So this, this is added. We have two groups now. We have all users in place. This is the first part of the uh, this task which was asked to do. These users have access, but they are still not able to access anything. We just checked in. Here, you can see that the structure of data science folder and the devops folder data science has two projects devops has two projects respectively under dev and production yes. we want that only devops engineer should access folders under uh, projects under devops folder i'll click select devops in the project I'll section and access i'll go back copy the group name which is gcp devops group at the cloud screen dot in let's copy the copy it and paste it if sync is working fine we should be able to find it yes we could find it for now, let's give the viewer access. Okay. Once viewer access is given, you can also give another role by clicking add another role. Let's save it. Once you save it, you'll see that GCP principle, which is identity, viewer is role, and attachment is done at IAM. That is the three part of the IAM which we just explained during PPT. Let's log in through credentials of John Miller. And let's see what John can see when you log in, change your organization. Awesome. You can see John has permission to see, view DevOps dev and DevOps production project. That is what was expected. A DevOps engineer is only able to see DevOps projects. He has no visibility on data science project or any other folder structure. That is the minimum level of permission we wanted to give and we have achieved by uh, doing this for DevOps team. All right. This is the way if you have groups already available Tomorrow you don't have to do it. You just have to add new users or exiting users In from that group, you don't have to come to GCP now you can access bucket John can access bucket now John can see projects now or anything as a viewer. Let's sign out and also do the same stuff with data science team because a data science team also wants to see their projects that that's my use case one for that for that again i'm going to do the same thing i'll go to gcp data science group copy it always remember this email address is your principal and the identity and uh, this particular member of this group should have viewer access on all the folders matt hardy is from data scientist team let's go and check if he can see the projects of data science folder Welcome Matt, I'll accept it and let's go ahead and check if he has access to any projects now. Brilliant. He also have access to data science projects. Now he can go ahead and check the access if he can access uh, after adding that, attaching the credentials. You can go to IAM and check that if uh, Matt, Matt can 
you know, see have read only permissions to these two projects. Earlier, this group has nothing. So that's how we created groups. We created uh, attached to the IAM permissions, and all these users can see only their respective projects. That's the way you do it uh, in an enterprise way. That is the end of the use case one. I hope it was helpful to reduce the size of the video. I'm going to cover remaining four use cases in the next video. Let me know your comments. In the, if you like the video, if something you couldn't understand, I'll be happy to answer. See you at the next video while we cover uh, remaining four use cases. Thanks for watching.